What's up guys, Ghost here back with some more Battlefield 3 tips today. We're going to be playing some uh, Rush on Send Crossing as the attacking team. And this is going to be a full round walkthrough. So I'm going to include everything, all the kills, all the deaths here for you guys to see. I see so many people in the forum saying, you know, how can I improve at the game? So rather than just sharing some generic uh, gameplay tip with you guys today, I'm going to take you through a whole round, why I do the things I do why I'm, uh, what I'm thinking as I do it, why I pick the kit that I pick, the weapon, etc. So here we are on Sen, running in there to arm the A objective. Um, and now the LAV here is backing us up, which is definitely the most powerful weapon that you have as the attacking team. So I've gotten in there easily with the LAV backing me up to arm A. Going to be peeking this direction as I don't really see many people on my team except for the LAV looking that way. Lots of guys down there, so I know I'm not really going to get backstabbed here. So I'm going to keep peeking this way. Um, and a few guys do try and make a run for it there, but get taken out by myself. So, pretty nice first easy MCOM there. If you've got a guy who's good in the LEV, he's going to rush down with um, half of your team in it. And you're easily going to get these first two MCOMs. They're, they're definitely some of the easiest ones to get in this map. So, this alleyway... Another big hot spot for action. Lots of guys coming up there. And I got a couple of kills, but I did get greedy there. I should have lobbed in a grenade. I should have fired an RPG or something like that down there. So this time around, I'm going to approach from the other side of the road. Try and take cover a little bit more. And just all in all, be a little bit more cautious. Now, it seems that my uh, teammates have already managed to take out that B objective whilst I was busy dying. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now I'm just going to be cautious, you know, pick off any stragglers that are left here and try and push them back to their deployment. So as we move up to the next couple of MCOMs here, which are considerably more difficult to take than the first two, why did I pick this kit? And why did I pick this weapon? Well, I wanted to go engineer so I could support our LAV and I could repair it. The enemy's uh, enemy team doesn't actually have any kind of vehicles to speak of. But that doesn't mean that my RPG is useless. There are lots of different angles on this map. Lots of windows, little shops to hide in. And really your RPG is such a great tool for taking people out. Now here I'm going to get a nice flank across the bridge on the enemy. Uh, those guys are too busy looking down the road at my teammates and they're all going to get flanked by me fortunately, for our team at least, as I take cover in this shop here. This is a nice little spot, it's really dark so it's quite difficult to see somebody in there except for the flash of their weapon. And uh, I'm not using a silencer or a flash suppressor or, or anything on my weapon here special but those guys still didn't see me, they all got taken out and I'm going to make a rush across this bridge. Now, part of the reason I went with this Scar H uh, in this setup is because of this area here. As you guys are probably familiar, there are a lot of snipers across the river. And you can crouch behind this long concrete wall that runs all the way down the river. And uh, all you see is somebody's head. So having a long-range weapon is quite useful, I feel, um, on this set of MCOMs. Now, I did get an arm off there. Unfortunately, I died and they disarmed. But, you know, sometimes you just got to make a run for it and try. Hope that your team is going to follow you and back you up. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen there. So now I'm going to spawn on the LEV. And there's two guys in there, so I'm just going to leave it. Give it a repair as I get taken out by falling rubble. And that is another reason why I picked to go engineer. In this map, destroying the rubble on the side of the buildings and letting it fall on enemy positions is uh, actually a really, really good strategy. And people do it a lot, as that guy, uh, he totally got me. He saw the LAV, he knew there was going to be guys close to it repairing it, and so he RPG'd the building next to us and managed to kill me and possibly somebody else. Now, we got another arm off on the objective here. Uh, I died, got rezzed, died again, and that's just kind of how it is in Rush. Sometimes you've got to take one for the team. If you can put yourself between the enemy and them disarming the objective, then that's just what you've got to do, even if it means that you're going to die, you know. The ultimate objective is to take out the MCOMs, and yeah, sometimes you just got to take one for the team, man. So we got both of those MCOMs pretty easily. Somebody else went and armed, uh, I think it's B, the one that's on the boat, um, which is probably the easier objective, to be honest. So now we're just sort of waiting to move up, and uh, we don't want to get back flanked here by these guys, so I'm going to take a few of them out. Um, but then really leave them because any of those guys that are still trying to trying to take us out at the bridge 
really they are not going to be pestering us at the next set of MCOMs. So we're just going to leave them there. I saw a guy running that direction, so I'm a little bit cautious here. Usually when you get to this stage, there are lots of guys around here, and I don't really see anyone. So I'm kind of thinking, like, where the hell is everyone, you know? I'm going to take a leg up this staircase here, try and get into this building. Um, this is really, really strange, because normally that building is flooded with enemy soldiers, uh, at the moment, it appears there's absolutely nobody here, so I was really happy to get into this building as you can look down straight over the B objective and you can cover it. So that guy's going to take up a position there, gets instantly taken out by me because nobody has control of this building that I'm in here. I I'm not going to go and try B myself. Since I have such a great vantage point here, I'm just going to stay and wait for somebody on my team to arm B objective and then I'm going to try and cover it myself. That's my thought process at the moment. I'm not going to worry about A, I'm just going to try and concentrate on B. And I see one guy there running in, I'm really hoping that people are going to come and back him up. But apparently it just seems that it's me and uh, this one guy. Um, so he gets the arm off on B. And um, right here I think he's about to C4 the place. Um, I suppose he did that to try and take out anyone who may be disarming. But it was kind of stupid because I think he just blew himself and his friend up. And now he's opened the way up for enemies to get in. And there you see, if I wouldn't have been in this building, those two guys that are running in there, they would have uh, easily gotten that disarm off. So this building is such a great vantage point. Now all of our team has moved up onto that objective. They're pretty much overrunning the area. So in a little while, I'm going to start worrying about the A objective and pushing on that. So it seems our team has pretty much overrun uh, the area where the MCOM was right now. There's a guy up in that window. They're a little bit late to the party, but, you know, better late than never, I suppose. So now I'm going to run around to this window. And another great reason why it's uh, a good idea to occupy this building. You're going to be able to flank the enemy on A objective here. Up that staircase across the other side is a very common place for infantry to be hiding out. Now our wall gets completely smored in here. Uh, at this point, I'm thinking, as I watch the footage back here, I probably should have gotten the hell out of there. You know, they're obviously on to me. They know I'm there. They've taken out the entire wall, and it's going to be easy for them to lob grenades in there. So I should really be backing off right now, and maybe trying to take a different flanking route round to the A objective. Get one guy there. As some of it, Somebody on our team tried to uh, flank. And now you see, I'm down to 3% health. Just as I thought, I'm going to end up getting taken out here. Yep. There I go, grenade straight in the window. So sometimes you can over, well, not overcommit, but rather get a little bit too greedy, you know. A good position is nice if the enemy don't know about you, but don't stay in the same position for too long, you know. Always change things up. I mean, I suppose it's a rule of thumb that you really shouldn't take uh, a shot from the exact same position twice, even though I'm guilty of doing that a lot as well. So here I've got a nice little flank in this grass. These bushes actually help you a lot. You know, don't just stand on the staircase. Stand in the bushes. Stand in as much camouflage um, and as much cover as you can. I've just waited a little bit here. I see all my teammates have died, but I've taken out most of them, so I'm going to take a run for it. And when you arm an MCOM, try and stand, you know, behind it where the enemy aren't going to be able to attack you. I know that they're only coming from that direction up the staircase, so I stood on this side of the MCOM to arm there. I'm taking a hover behind this uh, shipping container that the MCOM's actually in right now. And I know that most of the enemies are going to be coming from up this staircase. So that's really the only angle that I have to worry about right now. And at this point, I'm pretty sure that we got this one. You know, it's, we got plenty of teammates around. We're not going to get taken out. So here we move up to the next set of objectives. You want to watch around here. There can, I, I mentioned in a previous video about rush defending that it's always a good idea, even if you lose both your MCOMs, to hang around the area and try and kill as many attackers as you can because they may not be expecting it. So I went in that house there. I was going to go clean upstairs, but I see a guy running down on my team and I assume that he's probably already gone and uh, taken care of anyone that was up there. So I'm just going to hang back here until we can move up to the next set of objectives. So here we go, moving up to the fourth and final set of MCOMs here. More, two of the more difficult MCOMs, I feel. Definitely the second set and this fourth set here are more difficult. And it's a big contrast with the first and the third set because they're really set around close quarters combat. Um, you know, small alleyways, roads, and there aren't really as many angles that you have to check. I mean, there are plenty of windows and sort of 
little alleyways that people hide in. And as you move through the map, you have to check on those. But this set of MCOMs here, there are just so many angles. There's so much cover, so many trees, uh, little pieces of concrete. There's an entire building across there where snipers are hiding and windows. And it's just really difficult to move, uh, to just sort of run across the map without being killed. So you have to be really, really cautious while moving up. And as you can see, we're not moving up. We're just sort of peeking and trying to take out anyone that we possibly can. Now, uh, this guy, he right here, he comes and he jumps down the stairs, kills me, and I'm pretty sure he instantly dies there. So, a bit of a, a random run-in for him. I'm um, surprisingly nobody reses me. You know, if you're running over a dead teammate in a completely safe area, like I was in there, res them. I mean, not if not for the teammate, then at least for your team, you know, you're going to get extra tickets by resing people, and that's going to lengthen the longevity of your team. And right there you see a perfect demonstration of how difficult it can be to press up to these two objectives. I thought I'd take a little run for it there, but sure enough, a guy comes around the corner with the M1683 and takes me out. Um, not the best weapon to have, the Scar H for taking out an assault player with the M1683, but you know, that's just the way of the game. You can't be optimal all ranges. So I'm going to try and push up the right side here. I see that our LAV is up. I'm not sure where it's been all round. I haven't seen it since the beginning. But it's finally here, so that's all that matters. And we're going to try and push up towards B objective right now. And it's just chaos everywhere. You know, there's a guy, and he's up in a little tiny sill. I can't even see him. All I see is that he's spotted. And he's up there camping with his LMG in a bipod. So that's the kind of things that you run into in this scenario. Luckily, I got res there. And the first thing I'm going to do is to take out that pesky little bugger. And definitely, most of my deaths in this round are coming from this set of MCOMs right here. I'm trying to make a push-up as much as I can to close in on the enemy position before our team loses too many tickets. But we just keep getting killed, you know, over and over again. Um, we're almost into the building here. I make a bit of a mistake there. I thought that guy hadn't seen me. I was going to lob a grenade at him. Uh, however, he had, and he just jumped out and completely surprised me and took me out. Uh, luckily I get rezzed right there, so we finally made it into the building. And once you're in, it's a hell of a lot easier to arm the MCOM. Really, as the defenders, their strongest time to push you back is if they hold the area that they had before with all the cover, and the only places you have to move up are those little narrow staircases. So we're coming to the end of this round here soon. We've got inside the building now, so planting this objective is probably not going to be too difficult. As you know, I've always been big on self-improvement. Um, it's always been a big focus of my channel, both for your guys' sake, but also for my own. You know, I feel if I have to sort of analyze things like weapon statistics, how I play, um, why I do the things I do, and how I'm thinking, you know, I, I also hope that it finds... Oh, sorry, I also find that it helps me improve my play as well as you guys. So this is something I don't really see a lot of YouTubers do. People just generally edit their footage, put in, you know, kill streaks or the best moments out of a round, and they'll they won't really show you everything. So I thought rather than just um, give you some certain tip on the game in general today, I would throw in an entire round, you know. I see so many players on the forums saying, uh, how can I get a better KDR? Or, how can I stop dying all the time? And of course, the short answer to that, I suppose, is just play the game more and get better at it. But, really, there is no short answer. You can't just say, oh, just do this, you know, it's a simple solution. So I thought the best thing that I can do for you guys is just to show you a whole round um, you know, what I'm thinking when I'm when I'm playing and and how I play really with all the deaths and all of the uh, kills So I hope you guys enjoyed it Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of it and uh, if you'd like to see more of the same stuff And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers